Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is one that has been super highly requested and that is how I edit my Instagram pictures and basically just keep a white feed. I feel like the number one rule in having a white theme is basically just taking your pictures in front of a white background. If you take one in like a different setting, it might not work as well. So having a white theme, it is kind of limiting. So if you want to start a white feed, you kind of have to have that in mind. But I feel like it personally looks really nice. That's why I have it. So enough babbling. I am going to show you how I took this picture from this to this. And how I edit that picture is basically how I edit all my pictures. So if you want to know how I got my theme, this is how to do it. So first off, we're going to go into my photos folder. If you want to see what else I have on my iPhone, I will have that video linked down below. But this is my photos folder. I have Aviary, Facetune, Snapseed, and Visco. I also have PicJoiner and Fonto, but I don't really use those unless I'm making thumbnails on the go. But for now, we're going to go into Aviary. So you can see here it's very dark. Aviary has a bunch of different options you can play around with, but usually I use only three. The first one is lighting. So usually I will bump that up kind of a lot. For this one, I'm going to put it up all the way. Usually I don't put it up all the way, but for this one I am. And then I go to contrast and just give it a tiny bit of contrast. And then for highlights, sometimes I'll put it down to kind of save the highlights, but I don't really need to too much for this photo. It always just depends on the photo itself, so I'm not going to do too much highlight save on that. And for shadows, I'll always bring it down just a little bit so that the blacks come out a little bit more black. And then I'm going to hit apply and then go over to color. So for color, usually I will bring the warmth up a little bit, not too much, and then bring the saturation down just a little bit on that too. So it kind of gives the skin tones just a little bit of warmth, but then it takes away a little bit of the color from the rest of the photo. And then I'll hit apply to this. And then I'll head over to sharpen and just give it a little tiny bit of sharpness so that it looks a little bit better, especially if you took it on your actual iPhone. And then after sharpen, I will head over to whiten. Now I don't always use the whiten tool on this one because you see, I mean you can zoom in and whiten the areas that need to be whitened, but it doesn't have an eraser tool and Facetune does have an eraser tool, so I prefer to use Facetune for that. Of course, Facetune is a paid app, so if you don't want to pay for it, Aviary is perfectly fine. You just have to be a little bit more careful. So, once I've lightened, colored, and sharpened the picture a little bit, I'm going to hit save and click done, and then we are going to head into Facetune. I'm going to open up the photo we just edited, and I'm going to go straight into whitening. So when I whiten my photos, I usually like to zoom in on the areas that need to be whitened and just pretty much whiten them. It's pretty self-explanatory. And then once you're done whitening, you can click this tool and see the difference. You see how much of a difference that makes. It really brightens it up without making it look overexposed. So that's why I really like to use Facetune. And again, if you messed up in some area, like, I don't know, like you accidentally whitened your leg, you can hit the erase tool and fix that up. So I'm just gonna click OK on that and then save it to camera roll. If you want, you can use Snapseed. Um, I don't really use this one too much, but it's handy for some things. Um, let's see. What I really like to use Snapseed for is the selective tool. So you can basically select any area, and then it has option for brightness, contrast, and saturation. And you can see like the red area is what it will affect. So if you want to take out all like the weird coloring, like if your whites are too blue or too warm, you can put it on saturation and bring the saturation all the way down. So it'll take out all of the color from that specific area. And you can add multiple areas in your photo. Like for this, I could bring the brightness up. It's however you specifically want to edit your photo. But I'm not gonna use that today. I'm just gonna head straight into Visco. So here I have imported the photo into Visco and I'm just going to hit this little toolbar thing so we can head into the editing section. So Visco Cam has a lot of different filters you can choose from. Most of these I actually paid for just because I like more of a variety in the filters that I can choose from. But mostly lately I have been using N1. So I'll usually just hit that and then bring it down to about three to five depending on the photo 
For this one, I'm going to do four. What I really like about the filter N1 is that it makes everything really, really bright and gives it kind of a cool tone, which really matches my feed. So that's what I'm going to be going with today. And then I'm going to head into the tools. So for this one, I'll usually just play with the brightness. Um, mine's already really bright, so I'm not going to do the exposure, but usually I will play with the exposure. I'll usually give it one bit of contrast. The saturation, depending on the photo, I'll bring it down if it has like a lot of color in it, but this one doesn't have too much color, so I won't do that. Um, let's see. For the temperature, I'll usually bring it down just one, because I don't like to go too crazy with the filters. I like to give it sort of a natural look, just really white. And then I will go into fade and bring the fade up, depending on the photo, like around two to four. For this one, I'm just going to do two and then click OK. And then I'm going to click the check mark and then that's done. If you're lazy like me and you don't like to edit every single photo individually, what I really like about Visco is that you can select any photo you want, click the little circle, and then click copy edit. So if one of the photos you've already edited is kind of the same as the one you are currently editing, you could just copy those edits and then paste them on to the new photo. So if it copies over and it matches perfectly, you don't even have to go into the editor and do all of those steps. You can just go in and tweak it if it needs a little bit of adjusting. But that is pretty much it. After that, I will just head over into Instagram and upload the photo. I don't really use the editing tools in Instagram. Every once in a while, I will put the brightness up a little bit if it needs it. I'll just do some last minute tweaking, but I don't think this one needs any last minute tweaking, so I'm just gonna hit next, write a little caption, and then I would click post. So that's basically how I edit my Instagram pictures. Again, I do that one process for all my other pictures and it tends to just work well with my theme. It's kind of a tedious process, but after you've done it for a while, it gets like faster and faster. So hopefully if you've been wanting to start a white theme, this has helped you and given you some tips. If you're subscribed and you've liked and all that kind of stuff, thank you so much. It seriously means a lot to me and I really appreciate it. And yeah, I think that's it. Thank you again and I will see you for my next video.